Hi, um, I'd like to talk now a little bit about uh, the difference in surface expression of layering in uh, the Gale Crater Mound and the possibility of um, more recent aeolian uh, um, erosion um, exposing areas with um, good layering. So the distance between these two points is 200 meters and the contour interval uh, is 50 meters at this point and again there's no uh, vertical exaggeration. So if we zoom in there are certain places uh, where uh, layering is well expressed um, and you can see that in places like like this canyon. So I'm going to turn off the contours uh, for a moment um, uh, and you can see that the weathering or the excuse me the layering uh, is really well expressed. And in some of these wide canyons, it's very well expressed both in the bottom um, and on the on the sides of the canyon walls and the steep slopes. So if we turn the contours back on, um, this is 50 meter contour interval. So this is um, a, a, a very steep slope um, that's about 150 meters high, a little bit more. Okay. There are other areas that uh, consist of the same strata, if you trace them along strike, um, where the expression of the layering is much poorer. So let's, let's use this knob um, as an example here. Um, so when we look at uh, the south and west facing uh, slopes in here, um, there's very little uh, in the way of layering. Um, and uh, if we go a little bit further down stratigraphically, um, the uh, layers um, are uh, within that, or at least we see scarps uh, within these slopes. Um, however, if we follow this along stratigraphically, uh, on the more northerly uh, facing slopes um, here, the layering is much better addressed and then again in uh, this particular canyon. So this canyon is again one that's uh, substantially wide. It's uh, widened um, com and um, has a very different geometry than a lot of these narrow areas that do not um, expose the layering nearly as well. And even if you go up the mound from this one you lose the layering and there's evidence of uh, uh, sand dunes within that. Um, so one of the things that a number of us have been talking about is if you have sulfate minerals, particularly magnesium sulfates, they are likely to uh, dissolve uh, and, or, or recrystallize uh, very frequently with changes in moisture and uh, changes, um, well, changes in moisture. And so one of the things, one hypothesis that uh, I've been working with is the idea that a lot of these surfaces that don't show much layering um, have experienced a significant amount of, of recrystallization with changes in uh, humidity, maybe some water exchange for the atmosphere, um, possibly over a billion years, hundreds of millions of years, where there are other places like these valleys, the small one here, or the major canyon over here, um, where they express the good layering, um, it could be uh, places uh, where the um, uh, wind abrasion has cleaned off the layers and also widened the canyon. So particularly if we look at this, this major one here, um, we can see that it's wide, U-shaped, uh, uh, valley, and then there are um, aeolian dunes at the front of it. So one possibility would be to have wind uh, blowing up the canyon, um, exposing these areas. So in terms of um, MSL and uh, science targets, this is something that would be really interesting to look at. Not only do we have the original deposition of the layers, um, fluvial activity associated with this canyon, but then we also have this variation in, in uh, exposure processes that may, be telling, may tell us something about the um, effects of atmospheric water exchange uh, with uh, sulfate minerals on the surface of Mars. Thanks for watching.